Here are five reasons why doctors say the ACL has a poor blood supply. Reason number one is that they're comparing it to other body parts that have a high blood supply and that's an unfair comparison because ACLs, it's a ligament, an anterior cruciate ligament. Ligaments we know have a low metabolism and don't require a high blood supply to operate, to heal. That's the way that we're supposed to be versus muscles, nerves, and skin and internal organs in our body, they do have a high blood supply. They need a high blood supply. So when you're talking about the blood supply of say the brain versus the ACL, yeah, it's got a poor blood supply, but the brain is brain, it's nerve tissue, and it needs a lot of blood, it needs a lot of oxygen. If you hold your breath long enough, you will pass out because your body will take you through a reflex to get you to lie flat, to get more blood to the brain, because you're not getting enough oxygen to it. The ACL doesn't function like that. It's not a critical to life organ and it just has a lower metabolism. So it's unfairly compared to other organs in the body. So it doesn't need a high blood supply. It's proportionally just right. The number two reason why doctors say it has a poor blood supply is because there's poor research on the topic. There's hardly any research studies out there compared to all the research articles that are done on the ACL for surgical techniques, for the equipment that are, that's used, the injections and medications, all the stuff that surrounds surgery on the ACL, that's what makes up the majority of the ACL research out there. But when it comes to researching the actual blood supply of it, it's minuscule, it's tiny. That takes me to point number three is that because there's very little research, it's not going to be taught very much in school. And sometimes a lack of research is interpreted as it doesn't exist or it's not possible. And just because there's a lack of research on the vascularization or the blood flow to the ACL doesn't mean that it's non-existent, but sometimes it's interpreted that way. It's communicated that way in medical schools. And so as a result, you have doctors, surgeons that are finishing school thinking that there is no blood supply to the ACL because sometimes they'll say that they'll say it has a poor blood supply or they'll say it has no blood supply, which is completely false. It does have a blood supply. The fourth reason is that, an ACL having a poor blood supply and then connecting that to it doesn't heal as a result of the poor blood supply gives them fuel for doing a surgery. So it kind of matches what they're doing. And I don't think that doctors are trying to do anything harmful to anybody or trying to have bad intent with people. But if you're a studied surgeon, if you went to school to become a surgeon and your job is to find things to operate on, then chances are you're going to be looking for those situations and find a reason to do it and have supporting evidence to support your idea uh, on doing a surgery with a patient. So you have to take that into consideration too. And point number five is that most people that don't have surgery end up going through treatment that doesn't support good healing. So they, they get poor healing results. And when they go back to that surgeon who has that kind of an attitude of, I, I told you you should have gotten surgery, then it just supports the belief that the ACL can't heal and that the natural treatment methods out there don't work. But in reality, if you went to a physical therapist that tends to see patients who have had an ACL reconstruction, I mean, just think, if you're a person that had an ACL tear and you were sent by the doctor to a physical therapy clinic and most patients there had surgery, then you're seeing a physical therapist that specializes in helping people after a surgery rather than prevent a surgery. Most physical therapists out there are this type and they're great at it, they're excellent at it. Physical therapy schools in the United States are very good at teaching their patients to help recover from problems after surgery, from the, the problems of recovery after surgery, but they're not great at helping people avoid surgery. What's necessary to properly avoid an ACL surgery is taking pressures off the knee joint by correcting muscle imbalances. And this is not something that's talked about in medical schools or physical therapy schools or much at all in the healthcare profession. Identifying muscle imbalances and understanding how they put bad pressures in the knee joint and add tension to ACLs is not well understood and not treated very well as a result. It's something that I specialize in. That's why I talk all about it in this channel. Which by the way, if you wanna learn more about ACL, I have tons of videos about how to heal an ACL naturally. I have linked them all in a playlist down in the description below. It's called the ACL Tear Help Playlist. And I've also got a program 
called the ACL Tear Recovery Program. That's my entire treatment approach designed on helping you walk through all the steps necessary to heal an ACL naturally. Go check it out in the description below. Without putting that ACL in the right position to heal, then chances are it's going to be over tensioned as it's trying to heal and it's not ever going to get to the position where it can fully scar down and then you can get the fibers to adapt and become normal again so that you can get back to doing all the high level activities or even just basic activities without worry that your knee is going to be injured again. We take our patients through our treatment approach so that they put that ACL on slack so that it can heal right and we're not over tensioning it and then keeping it there long enough so that it's good and then gradually adding normal loads to it so that it can adapt and then that person can get the right muscle balance around their leg in their thigh muscles and their hip muscles and their foot muscles even so that then they can have confidence to go out and do the exercises that they want to do the movements that they choose and to get back to even competitive sports and high level activities like downhill skiing with full confidence that their knee can take it and that their ACL is not going to be an issue. We teach people this all the time here in our clinic and I put it in that ACL tear recovery program for you as well. The anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, does have a good blood supply. It has an adequate blood supply and doctors out there aren't always giving you the, the full information and it's not always their fault because of the way they're taught in schools.